Ready to go. Okay. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back. Today we're working on this little yard machines tiller. Now, when I bought it, he told me that it's going to leak gas everywhere if I put gas in it because the tank has a crack on the bottom. So it's been sitting for a long time. So we're going to go ahead and rebuild the carburetor and put a new gas tank on it and see if she works. So all you new people out there, go ahead and subscribe. It's free and it's what we work for. So let's get started. Okay, if you're doing a job like this, make sure you've got a magnet to keep all the nuts and bolts on, or it's just going to be a pain in the neck to put back together. Easy to take apart, but it's easy to loose things also. Just like that. So let's get this out of the way. This didn't come all the way off easily. Let's see what we've got behind it. No, we're going to go up a size. Going to go to our trusty 7 16ths, I think. Now, because she's a leaker, we don't have to worry about the fuel because it doesn't have any. There we go. And she's loose. You see the gas cap also has an escape hatch. And that's it. The only thing we've got left is our little clamp here. Oh, goodness. Okay, we're going to pull this off here. And then we'll move the uh, we'll move this over to the other tank. And give it a new little fuel line here also. Huh. And there you go. See the big split in the bottom of the tank? That would be a leaker. Now we're going to go ahead and pull the carburetor. Because we know it's been sitting for a while. And even if the tank leaked out all its gas, a lot of gas just sat here also. And getting the carburetor off one of these is pretty easy peasy. That's it. Should be just about it. Those two bolts. Oh, one more up here. I always forget about that one. I don't get to play with this particular motor often enough. So we'll get that out of the way. Now we'll go up a size, I believe. Yep. We'll go up to a 3 eighths. Now, as long as this isn't cracked, we should be good to go. Give this thing a good cleanup. There we go. We'll roll it off the linkage very carefully. Use care not to bend this little spring here. Because you need your governor. Especially on a tool like this. Okay, we'll put our uh, spacer plate in up here. And that's it. Let's go clean her up and see if you can get her running. There you go. Now she should hop right off. And there we have it. Okay, let's pull the ball off. This is where all the magic happens. And you see, because the bolt's brass colored, this is the jet. Yikes. This carburetor is not what I would call beautiful. But I'm going to run it through the ultrasonic anyway and see if we can get away with it. I could pull this front, front butterfly off. Yeah, let's do it. I'm going to pull the front butterfly off just to get the choke arm out of the way. This is a whole lot worse than average, but we're going to try anyway. Let's run her through. Let's run her through the ultrasonic and see what we can do. She's still warming up now. I usually run it at 60C. When oh, 
come off. So put our little parts in the basket so we don't lose them. There you go. You know, it doesn't really make any difference. We'll put that in there and let it float anyway. She'll warm up in no time once it's done running. We don't replace carburetors very often for a four-stroke, but when we got that one out of the ultrasonic, it was just simply unacceptable. It was in bad shape. So we're going to go ahead and pull the choke on a new carburetor. Come on, buddy. I think we are anyway. There we go. We're going to pull this choke out, and we're going to take the old choke off the old carburetor and put it in this bad boy. And whenever you do this, save the old choke plate out of, out of, the, out of the old carburetor because 90% of the time it'll work fine. And on the times where it doesn't, we'll just use the one off the new one because we know the new one will fit in the barrel. Let's get her lined up. Let's see if she closes correctly. And she does. Okay, looks good. So this carburetor will be ready to go. So let's go throw her on the machine. This is the part where using a magnet can save you. I had to let this project sit for a couple of days because, well, you know, life comes up. Life makes you busy. And now that we're back to it, I know where all my nuts and bolts are. I don't have to go searching for anything. We do have to search for that tiny little hole, though. Come on, buddy. Don't be a pain in my tail feathers. There we go. There's one. Not for the easy one, the great big one. Well, it's usually the easy one. There we go, and there's the other. Now, our back gasket still looks good. So we'll get this in place. A little spacer. We get our nuts ready. And we'll start one. There you go. Now I get the other one lined up, get the gasket lined up correctly. And start number two. And I know you're right there somewhere. At least I think you are. There we go. Okay, we'll grab our handy 3 8 oh, It's just not quite cooperating for some reason. And she's good. Okay, the carburetor's on. Now, let's put the fuel line on next, since we've got plenty of room right here. And remember to keep track of what order you put to take things apart because when you're putting it back together if you don't do this a whole lot it won't be obvious that the fuel line is going to be blocked by the air cleaner and all that in just a second here so we do this now we put our air cleaner back and everything is in the way of everything there we go Let's ease you back in, if I recall correctly, these use the 5 sixteenths. And take your time and be patient. You don't want to bend stuff up when you're doing this. Let's go under here, excuse me. Switch off and go to the 5 sixteenths. Tighten them down. Easy peasy. Now what's left is the fuel tank. We've got our new fuel tank, which does not have a crack habit like the old one did. Let's 
turn this bad boy sideways. Well, it didn't want to come off when I wanted it off, but it sure falls off easy now, doesn't it? Okay. We'll take our four bolts. What do we got? Three eighths or five sixteenths? Three eighths. These might even be seven sixteenths. They are. Nope. They are not. Now notice I don't tighten them all the way down until we get them all started. That way they won't go, they won't uh, torque the plastic in a manner where the other screws won't go in easily. And don't go too crazy tight on these if you're replacing a fuel tank because all you'll do is put undue stress on the plastic and that doesn't help anybody. And we're an air filter and this little piece of trim from starting up. I can't believe that fell out that easy. Let's get our little trim on. There we go. I think we want even a smaller one. We do. I think these are a quarter. They are not. Yep, we dropped one. Since we went out of our way to save our screws, we want to make sure every single one of them goes back in. Okay. And that's it. We've got a tiller ready to go. Okay. She's been sitting for a couple of minutes with the fuel turned on. So we'll set her on half rabbit. Full choke and give her a run. Okay, choke's off. Sounds pretty smooth. Let's pick the front end up a little. Now that's what I like to see. Okay, that came out really nice. If you ever have to buy a carburetor and you find that the choke lever is incorrect, but everything else is correct, and this counts on two strokes too, because I do this on two stroke carburetors all the time where I can't find a perfect match, but I'll find one that has one linkage incorrect. So I'll pull the butterfly off, pull the linkage out, and put the new linkage on from the old carburetor. In this case, we used the choke lever. We took this choke lever off, which came on this carburetor, but it was an exact match except for this lever. And then we used the one off the old carburetor and it started on the first pull. I mean, that started right up at idle low, nothing to touch on it. She's done. So all you new people out there, if you made it this far, you might as well subscribe. It's free and it really is what we work for. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.